All right. Thank you all for coming here today, well, tonight, at this 12 a.m. panel on LEGO games. All right. Uh, uh, before we start, I would like to get a show of hands. Who has played a LEGO game in this room? Cool, that's exactly what I expected. Um, now... Oh, good. We're going to be talking about that one later tonight. Um, now, does anybody... Now, raise your hand if you recognize the track that's been playing for the last, like, 30 minutes. <laughs> cool, that, that gives me some metrics. Um, I'm going to turn that off to prevent people from losing their minds over the main menu theme for LEGO Racers. Um, it's wonderful, but when that's the only thing you hear for five hours, that might be a problem. So thank you for coming. Um, I've been a long time LEGO fan. Uh, this is, the, in fact, the original box for the PC version. Um, fun story with this. My computer did not have the graphics card to run this in 2005, so I had to go with my dad to the electronics store to pick up a new NVIDIA graphics card. Um, but that's pretty much the easiest method to get any of these games to run on current hardware, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Thank you for coming. Um, just as a quick refresher, this is all of the LEGO games that currently exist. Holy shit. That's like 90 games. This is the list we're talking about here tonight. There's a significant decrease, and even with that, I will have to trim some stuff down, but here's the list of games we're talking about tonight. Now, first off, we have to talk about how LEGO Star Wars kind of changed everything. Um, before LEGO Star Wars was developed, LEGO games were made by different publishers, different people, different developers, um, and they were released under the LEGO license. When LEGO Star Wars came around, they were, after, from then and onwards, they were primarily produced by Traveler's Tales, and they kept a formula that consistently happens to this day. Currently, you're going to have 5 or 15 to 18 story levels of varying length. You're going to have them connected by some kind of overworld. There's going to be full of collectibles. You have gold bricks. You have mini kits. You have red bricks, which give you cheats. You have studs, which are your currency. And you also have a completion per level of studs. There are characters with unique abilities, such as being small, having explosions, hacking, being evil, and a grappling hook, and many more. Um, some of them add like a gold one for lasers. You have um, flying. There's a couple others, but those are the primary upgrades. These were the ones that existed in the original LEGO Star Wars. And there's always a free play mode for each level, which you have to do to complete the game. And you get rewards such as bonus stages and whatnot. This has been the, the entire formula since then. There's like two games that break that mold. Those are not what we're talking about today. Um, but we have to go back to what it was like before. And when we do, welcome to A Blast from the Past. Oh, yes! yes! Every single game started with this logo. It is a wonderful masterpiece, and I love it. I haven't seen that Lego logo in a long time. But, oh, no, don't play it again. No. <laughs> anyway, so I will preface this. If you want to play any of these games yourself, be warned. Oh, hey, I forgot I did that. Um, they are 16 plus years old. Every single one of these games is abandonware. There is not a legal way to get them other than buying a used copy. And if you do get a used copy, be warned, it is still going to be a, a very hard pain to get them to run at all. Of these games that I tried to get to run, all of the ones that worked on PC, less than 50% of them I could get to run in preparation for this panel, just to put that out there. Um, they were not meant to run on current systems. Some of them were for 16-bit Windows, the last version of which was pre-Windows 2000. Um, the console versions of these are difficult to get and also in varying quality. Some of them are better ports than others, and in fact, anything that is a Game Boy Advance port of something is a fundamentally different game because that's how games worked back in, this, in the time period of pre-2005. Um, you will experience pain trying to get these to run. Good luck, have fun, and uh, thank you for your service. Uh, the funnest bit of advice I had when looking for 
guides of how to get these to run was just have Windows 98 installed, forehead. Um, that's not going to work. Not going to work for all of you. Oh, nope, that went, nope. <laughs> Thank you for, we got to do a speed run. Thank you. Okay. I, uh, so we have to do a quick fire round because not all of these games have that much to talk about. And we got a lot of them. So first off, this is the first LEGO game that ever existed. It was for a little known console called the Sega Pico. Um, primarily an edutainment tool. This game was released only in Japan in 1995. There are a bunch of different levels. You can build stuff. It's kind of an interesting experience, but you need the actual original hardware in the game to get it to run in any kind of reasonable capacity. Emulation is not feasible for this because of how the Pico runs. I don't have a picture of it, but, and I apologize for that. Um, Lego Loco is a classic game. Um, it is basically like, what if you had SimCity but trains, but like Lego stuff. And it's a very interesting game. However, the highest resolution it runs in is 10, or 1280 by 1024. This is the highest resolution you can have your monitor at all for this game to run. Even then, this can happen. <laughs> so um, I don't have any like actual gameplay of this. I, I can tell you that is beloved by many. And in fact, the picture I showed here is from a tweet from the LEGO group this year saying, hey, LEGO Loco is one of our great favorite games, which is surprising because it's not been available or working for a long time. <laughs> um, LEGO Chess. Yeah. This is a classic. Came out in 1998. Uh, it, there were meant to be three themes, um, or four themes, I think. There's a castle style, your standard um, thing. There's a Cowboys versus Native Americans, which is a little bit tasteless on how they did it. And um, there's a, I think a Pirates theme was the other one. Um, there was going to be another theme, but d development had to cancel it. Um, each, there's apparently story with these, and with cutscenes. Each time you move a piece to capture another piece, there's a full-on animation that plays every single time. It is a very novel idea, but it is kind of slow, and like it's a neat little chess game. Um, Lego Friends, which this is not related to the current Lego Friends line. Surprisingly, even though the characters share the same names, this was related to the girls line of the like young girls line of Lego products that they had at the time. Um, you could have a scrapbook or have a music video, do a dance routine, make music. It's a really weird game. It's more of just like, this is meant for children. Um, Lego Rock Raiders. This is a favorite by some. It is one of those games that's kind of interesting. It's, what if we made an RTS for Lego? It's like, that's, sure, okay, that works. Wow, all right. Um, this one works one of the best of, like, surprisingly the best for how old this thing is. 1999. Um, Lego My Style. There were two of these, preschool and kindergarten, based upon Duplo Lego. And, um, they are all like, do some, uh, do some coloring books, do, like fill in by numbers, but there's like three diagrams. Um, make a little music thing, have pet the elephant. Like there's some, it, it's just pure kids game edutainment. Lego Alpha Team, which is one of the ones that's interesting because the uh, Game Boy port of this actually runs similarly to how the original game plays. Um, basically, you move the arrows, you, you rotate the arrows to get the, your secret agent to the goal. It's wonderful. But also, it's a weird puzzle game that I'm surprised they made. Um, this is not LEGO games that currently happen. These are the weird ones that we have before. Uh, LEGO Stunt Rally. This predates all of the LEGO Racers games. It is a top-down little kart racer with... It's a weird one. I don't know how to describe it. It's just like top-down kart racer, which they never made again. Um, Junkbot is here for a little bit. This was a flash game that they had. It's one of the ones that still runs really well to this day. The goal is you have to navigate the trash robot to eat the trash. Um, can't like maneuver the obstacles. Like this is what it looks like. The notable reason for this inclusion, this was made by the same people who made Diner Dash. Um, and so this also had a sequel, Lego uh, or Junkbot Undercover, where. Junkbot is trying to like figure out what his boss is doing with the secret folder that turns out to be a birthday party, but is it? Uh, it's a weird one. Um, soccer mania or football mania, depend on, depending upon where in the world you are. The, um, 
The Wikipedia page for this has this listed as football mania, except all of the pictures and everything are listed as soccer mania, which is really frustrating. <laughs> um, it is a lackluster soccer game. It is, there are significantly better ones. It is just like, what if we had Lego, but soccer? Um, there's, there's also all of the characters have punny names because this is a Lego game. Um, we'll get to some of the good pun names when we talk about Lego Island, but, uh, oh boy. This is, the, this is one of the last LEGO games that, that came out. This well, came out in 2004. Alongside a TV show and a LEGO line, no one remembers this. Um, that kid has a robotic arm. None of these parts work with any other LEGO system. People basically like, was like, this is stupid. Why are we liking this? It had a lackluster game. Like, it was one of the last shows broadcasted on Fox Kids before Fox Kids shut down. Um, it's a weird one that's surprising, like, how much it exists, because it really shouldn't. It's also just a lackluster, event, like, platforming adventure game. Um, it just plays. Now, this was the last game I think they released before LEGO Star Wars, and it is a top-down, like, I don't know how to describe this genre, but you play as a knight from the Knight's Kingdom line and go around fighting things. And the evil guy is very, like the guy who's obviously evil turns out to be the evil guy. No surprise. The, the red and black knight is evil. Who would have thunk? Um, it's an enjoyable game. It's not anything special, but it's Knight's Kingdom. And that is the end of the quickfire round. Those are a bunch of the smaller games that don't really have any like kind of long-term a legacy associated with them, but they're all kind of neat. Now we get into the ones that have of the series. Now, if you heard that theme in the beginning, you will have heard the LEGO Racers theme <laughs> and how much that title theme is driven into my skull and can never leave. <laughs> so the original LEGO Racers was a phenomenal kart racer. Um, like one of the greatest features it had was the fact that the power-ups are brick-based. You have four categories of power-ups, each of those are like you have oil slick, you have uh, speed up, you have a shield, and you have a rocket. And once you collect those, you could collect white bricks to upgrade that power. So the speed up would go from like taking you really quickly to just teleporting you like a third of the way through the track. Um, like this is a primarily fully, this is just a kart racer. And it is remarkably good of how it still holds up. This thing actually has controller support. But it's joystick support, but it's controller support. It, I'm surprised that it worked as well as it did. I played it with a DualShock 4. Like, what? Um, it is my favorite because it's goofy. You have a bunch of levels. There's a lot of shortcuts. It's a lot about learning a thing. But the other fun part is you can customize your, your racer and build absurdly stupid race cars. If you wanted to make a, a car out entirely out of pirate flags, the game would let you. Uh, there is no penalty to it. It's just, how does your cart look? Um, it's kind of neat. There's a bunch of different themes. It's kind of primitive of how they do it. But you don't have any limit on how many bricks you can put on your cart. Um, it just exists. It is a wonderful game. <laughs> I could continue playing it forever. Um, and there's like a bunch of different worlds. They're all based upon current LEGO properties of the time. So you have like sort of more of a Knight's Kingdom stuff. You have um, some space themes. You have just, it's just more about, here's LEGO. And then we get to LEGO Racers 2. This is a game I have a lot of mixed feelings about because there's things it did right. The controls are so much better. A, original LEGO Racers has a drift mechanic, a quick turn. Um, it's unwieldy. It is impossible to use. If you think of it as a Mario Kart drift, you are in the wrong ballpark. It is not controllable at all. You have to d deal with what the game gives you. Honestly, it's just faster to just take the turns normally than do a quick turn. LEGO Racers 2 fixes a lot of those problems. However, the way LEGO Racers 2 works, it is an open world racing game with a series of like levels. Each race takes place over a series of checkpoints inside the world. And there are benefits and downsides to that. The biggest downside is one, Every single race is locked behind adventure completion. There is a whole story mode that you have to complete. Everything. Um, and the races, for, like because you're doing races in the same world for a long time before you can go to the next one, they feel very same. 
They're the same race over and over and over and over. Um, it's interesting, and there's some cool ideas here, because you get when you get towards the end, it gets fantastic and wonderful. It's just the cutscenes are really long, and it's going to take you like 20 hours to get to the to actual fun parts. Um, I wish I could recommend this game, but honestly, I still recommend LEGO Races 1 if you want to play any of these games. However, there's a little bit of a curveball, because there is technically a LEGO Racers 3. And it's called Drum Racers. Now, if you pointed at that middle screenshot there and told me that was a LEGO game, I would tell you, what are you talking about? This was based on the Drum Racers line, which was a series of realistic, quote unquote, looking cars. They were kind of future looking. It was a lot of bendy pieces. It was interesting. But this was their, like, we want to make LEGO racing edgy and for the masses. They need to know the need for speed. Um, it plays. It is a lackluster. It lacks the novelty of the other two LEGO Racers games while still being just another kart racer. Um, I'm, putting it, I'm putting it on here because even though there's no, like, there's no LEGO in the title, it's just drum racers. And the only reason this is on this list is because, well, it came out in the right time. And also, in development, it was called LEGO Racers 3. And there were plans to make a LEGO Racers 4, but because of the failure of this game, that never, that never surfaced. And also due to the fact that the people developing it closed down shortly after releasing this game. Um, but then we get to the fun part. Yeah. Welcome to LEGO Island. Uh, this is, these are some games that are wonderful. Um, I learned recently in my research of doing this that there were three games because everybody only knows the two numbered ones. First off, we have to talk about LEGO Island 1. Um, just for preface, both LEGO Island 1 and 2 were developed by different people, um, different companies. LEGO Island 1 was developed, I don't remember the name of the company off the top of my head, but they made LEGO Island 1 and only LEGO Island 1. Um, it is a first-person adventure game. You are doing a bunch of odd jobs around the town as Pepper Roni, a pizza delivery man. Um, they really like their stupid puns. Uh, Pepper is wonderful, but this first game is just like, you do some building, you explore some stuff. It's first person, and there's a bunch of minigames. It is entirely about tying the minigames together. I could not get this game to run at all on modern hardware. It takes a lot of work, um, especially because this game came out in 1997, I believe. Yep, 97. Um, then we have LEGO Island 2, which is the one that most people remember. Funnily enough, this is a shorter game than LEGO Island 1. There are four worlds where you have a series of mini-games, such as whack-a-mole, um, jousting, diving, um, sand racing, and some moon ex exploration stuff. You continue to play as pepperoni with the fun feature of you can now skate on your skateboard. Unfortunately, the skateboard is slower than walking. Yeah. It is slower than walking. The cooler method of transportation is slower than walking. I was devastated when I discovered this. Because the last time I played this game was when I was a child. When I was like 10 years old. And heartbroken. The travesty this is. But there turned out to be, like the whole plot of this game is, oh no, Pepper in delivering pizzas to the town accidentally delivered the Brickster a uh, pizza with some chilies in it, which allowed the Brickster to deal or to spray fire breath to escape his to escape his jail cell. Oh no! And then he got the Constructopedia, and then everything started falling apart because everything's made of Lego bricks, and if they don't have the manuals of how to put them together. Well, how is the thing going to stay together? Um, the whole thing is you just explore around. It is a very short game. It is a surprisingly short game. It does like to crash a lot. I will warn you that. But it does run decently well on modern systems, surprisingly. Um, and then we have LEGO, or sorry, Island Extreme Stunts, which the Brickster is out on parole now, except Pepperoni is no longer a pizza delivery driver. He is a stunt man in movies. And the Brickster is actively trying to kill him. Um, actively trying to kill him, and there is proof after every time there is a like train wreck in any of his movie stunts that, hey, the Brickster, like, you see him cutting the brake line. You, you see, like, you see him pushing a, a support beam on the scaffolding that's keeping everything up. And the cops are like, 
that's not enough. We gotta, we gotta nail him on solider evidence. It's like, there is evidence of him trying to murder him. Right there. Friends, don't trust the police. <laughs> so this is a game that I'm only including here just to talk about Legoland for a little bit. Um, Legoland are a series of parks around the world. Legoland the game is, what if we made Roller Coaster Tycoon except Lego? So I actually have the game right here. Yeah. I don't have the fun. There's a version of the case that is actually bricks that you can stick several of the cases together. It's wonderful. I wish I had it. Um, this game is wonderful. It is the one game that took over my childhood along with Zoo Tycoon. Yeah. Those are my two favorite. Those were my two favorite tycoon games of all time. However, there's one fatal flaw with Legoland. None of the buildings can be rotated, and you can't rotate your camera. This game is locked at this exact like orientation. There's some fun things, like you have different themes of like Legoland, Wild West, space thing, and a couple of and like one other. And it's interesting and there's cool stuff, but it's like this is a game that came out the year after Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and has significantly less features than Roller Coaster Tycoon 1. You do get to build the mini lands, which are wonderful, which are basically like, would you like a mini Lego version of San Francisco or insert other city here? It, they're really nice. Um, they actually exist at the parks and are wonderful. But the fun thing is, when this game came out in 2000, it came with this screen that showed trailers for each of the parks. These were commercials. They're very, very old. These were the three parks that existed in 2000. We had Billund in 68, which is in Denmark where the LEGO group exists. We had Windsor, um, England in 96. Um, LEGO or California, which is in Carlsbad, California, happened in 99. Um, then we got one in Germany, and then we got one in Florida, and then Malaysia, and then Dubai, and then Japan, and then New York, and then Gardaland, which is in Italy, with plans to make five more. <laughs> in the last 20 years, we've gone from three parks to, I can't count, 15? Um, just a fun tidbit, just wanted to throw that out there. It is, these parks are wonderful. They're not, they're not that expensive. And if you ever get the chance to go to one of, them, one of them, you see some great Lego building. It's wonderful. Um, but we are, gonna, we are gonna move from Legoland, where you can build your own park, to Lego Creator, where you get to build your own whatever. Um, Lego Creator was a game, I say game, more of a sandbox tool to build things. This was, if you wanted to play with Legos, but you didn't have the ability to have like a massive bin or infinite of the same color, is a very primitive Lego builder. Um, they'd eventually add a like kind of pseudo cr Lego creator on their website, which they had for a long time. I don't think it's still up anymore. Um, but this was a, we're gonna like have, let you build to your heart's content with the standard Lego theme. Um, unfortunately, this game does not like to run on current hardware. Um, it's very finicky. It likes to implode at the, at the smallest sign of anything over, um, like anything larger than 1080 on your graphics. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really interesting because this is where we had the first licensed Lego games. Um, first off though, we had Lego Knights Kingdom or Creator Knights Kingdom, which is based on the Knights Kingdom line. It was a, hey, we got knights, you're gonna fight, and you get to have some fun times. Um, yeah, no, it's, the, it's just Lego Creator, but Knight's Kingdom. And then we had Lego Creator Harry Potter, which is the first licensed Lego video game. One of two before Lego Star Wars. Um, it, it's interesting, because this looked like primitive 3D models and not Lego, which is the fun part of these. It doesn't look like Lego. And then we had another one for Lego, uh, for just creator Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. They are build Hogwarts, build your Lego sets, build some fun times. And they are before they change the um, minifigs to actually be white instead of the classic yellow. 
Um, it's just an interesting little tidbit of just here's the original stuff. But these are not the last games that exist. Yes. So if you have been to MAGFest in the past, you know there is occasionally a panel about the Bionicle lore. And you know it gets wacky. It is a time, and I do not have the ability to go into the deep, dark Bionicle lore for you here today. Nor the time, even though there's like a half an hour left of this panel. <laughs> um, we start off with LEGO Bionicle, or LEGO Bionicle Quest for the Toa, or LEGO Bionicle 2001, or there's another title, but they changed it due to the words being not great, because it was more of like, Bionicle, we're going to take some Polynesian ideas and words and concepts, and we're going to use them. Except we used a lot of them incorrectly early on, and there were problems with it. They changed a lot of those in future re-releases, but when you look this game up, sometimes it will come up as LEGO Bionicle 2001, not to be confused with LEGO Bionicle 2003. Um, you get to create your own um, little, um, I don't remember what those guys are called. Ma thank you, Matoran. It's been a while. <laughs> Um, you get to create them, you get to explore this wonderful, wonderful world of pixels and throw things at, at people and explore lava levels and other things. It is a menace because it is a platformer. It, I guess it's a 3D platformer on a Game Boy Advance. This is a rough game to play, if only because this control scheme likes to like make you feel pain. Um... Yeah, that's all I can say about this one. It is a very interesting game. It, it, all of these games are no longer canon. It, not that it really mattered ever, anyway, <laughs> because of how convoluted Bionicle canon is. Um, but we go from that to Bionicle Matoran Adventures, which is um, much later in the timeline. And you have some interesting things. You have your little Matoran, plus I'm not sure what that companion is behind them, um, because it's been a long time since I actually dug into the Bionicle lore. Um, it's a side-scrolling platformer with like abilities to break things and throw discs at people and it's an actually really interesting game It's you can feel that it is a game from the early thousands or 2000s. It feels it hard But it's a actually relatively enjoyable time if you feel like doing it. It's not hard to find a copy of this um, either physical or um, however you want um, And then we have the fun one Bionicle the game <laughs> This one is loosely based off the Mask of Light uh, kind of storyline that they had, which they had a fun movie. Um, I still love that movie. It's terrible. I love it. Um, where they find the Mask of Light, and you have to defeat um, Makuta and his evil evilness. Um, you go around. You just explore some areas. Um, each of your Toa counts as an extra life, which is interesting. Um, however, it's... Combat is a bit janky, and it doesn't also, it, like, the whole combat loop is you have, you can basically throw projectiles and also shield incoming projectiles towards you. So it's a, basically like a dodge and shield and knowing when to do stuff at the right time. It's a really interesting combat system. The game is not that great, but there's a lot of interesting ideas here that are well worth your time if you can get this thing to run. The ones that I recommend, if you can find a physical copy for console, these are going to be the ones to run it well. Um, I have the game here myself. Unfortunately, I can't get this to run, even though I have the discs in my possession, because it requires the code on the back of the box <laughs> that I no longer have. Uh, even if I did, I found some, uh, some code that people had lying around. Um, even if I did, this game does also likes to implode on current systems, um, on this my favorite laptop running Windows 10 um, does not like it. Immediately crashes, tells me to close all other applications, even when I have no other applications open. Um, and it goes like, hey, hey, idiot, why are you playing this game? Um, I would love if they brought some of these games back because there are some really interesting things going on here. Um, then we have Bionic Bionicle Maze of Shadows, loosely based on the Maze of Shadows storyline from Bionicle, where the uh, Toa Metro, I believe they are, um, are escaping, um, are trying to save the Matoran, and all that stuff there. 
This is a turn-based RPG. It is a remarkably solid turn-based RPG with puzzle dungeons. This is a game I would, like all of the GBA Bionicle games, I 100% recommend because they all hold up to this day. Well, okay, except the first one. The first one does not hold up. But the other, the other two do hold up. They are remarkably enjoyable times. Um, right. Now, I left the best for last. This is the Matanui online game. I would like a show of hands in the audience of anybody who has played this. I'm sorry. We need to correct this travesty. This is a point-and-click adventure in Flash of Bionicle. Some of these plot points get used later in actual Bionicle storylines. Um, there are remarkably well, like, well done puzzle elements. There are dialogue options. You are exploring this entire island. It's an epic story. It's wonderful. And there is a remastered version of it that you can find online that people have put together. It is wonderful. I highly recommend, of any of the games I recommend for you today, to at least check this one out. If it's not your cup of tea, I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, now, there were two other, um, there, were, there was a Matanui Online game 2, which I don't have pictures of at the moment, because that one came out a little bit later, and it is a much different one. The second one has a lot more grinding, a lot more, you have to do menial chores instead of ex exploration. Also, you see your character in the space, and there's a very slow walking animation between the areas. <laughs> it's, it's cool. There's some cool ideas there, but it's nowhere near as strong as the first one. And there was a fan-made um, online game 3, which is 3D, which is actually really interesting. Um, there's not much to say about it other than, like, go check it out if you get the chance. Any of these are fantastic. Um, and there are people working on a new Bionicle game right now that are fans of the original work. I highly recommend you, like, implore you to seek this out if you are at all interested in Bionicle, because there's some cool stuff there. But this was a lot of people's childhoods, and it's really easy to get access to this one now compared to some of the other ones. Um, I kind of sped ran through some of my content, I realized. Um, but yeah, that's all of them. Welcome to It's Been 30 Minutes, and that's all of them. <laughs> Um, but no, there's a lot of really interesting LEGO games that I highly implore you to check out. Um, no, just they're good games. They're not all good games, but they are good games. And there, there was an attempt made that the formulaic approach that all future LEGO games would take is upsetting. Um, there is a Bionicle game that comes out immediately after LEGO Star Wars that was developed before LEGO Star Wars that has a lot of the trappings. It has a store where you can buy characters. It has the completion bar. It has, um, like, you have studs that are collectibles. They're not called studs in that, but it's basically just Lego studs. Um, no, there's some good stuff there. There's some really interesting pieces of history. And yeah, no, I think, yeah, just Lego games are cool. And thank you for listening to me talk about it for 30 minutes. If anybody has any questions or things they want to ask about, <laughs> hello there. What's your favorite Lego Star Wars Lego game? I, as much as I dissed it earlier, as much as I dissed it earlier, it has to be Legoland for my favorite. Um, yes. What about Rock Raiders? Can I not put Rock Raiders on here? Yes. We talk about Rock Raiders. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Right. Oh yeah, we had the uh, we had logo breaking on like breaking everything. Uh, yeah, we had Rock Raiders. It's a solid game. I definitely, definitely like check it out. It's not my cup of tea. I don't tend to like RTS games, um, but it's definitely an interesting time. Um, oh yeah. Uh, God, I'm still like reminded. Lego My Style likes to be a nightmare fuel a little bit. Um, it is a kids game after all. Yes. Star Wars. Do you have any information on those? Um, the <laughs> so the biggest problem is with how I wrote my notes. <laughs> I can't tell you which those games are. 
Possibly. Um, there's a couple in here that are definitely different, and some of them are like actually them taking the original formula and trying to do new things with them. They are not perfect. They are not. Great. Thank you for coming. Um, they are not perfect. They are not incredible, but they are definitely trying something new. I will say Lego Rock Band is a travesty because you don't actually have like an instrument input. It is a travesty, but it is an interesting attempt. Um, yeah, there's a part with Lego Dave and Bowie, it's great. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, and there's also Lego versus the Spinal Tap. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna to take this brick to 11. Um, but yeah, I, I uh, miscalculated on how much I needed to talk about this. Hello there, friend. <laughs> you want this to be stuck in my head for the next 20 years, don't you? Yes, we do. Don't act like it won't be. Can't do it. <laughs> Actually, you know what? You know what? Now, unfortunately, the version I have the version I have likes to have these weird things on transparent textures. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, if, actually, if you want to see what this looks like, here's your what, what terrible outfit can I give this guy? There we go. treasure chest on here. This is uh, I, this might not have been the level to choose, to be honest. Ooh, ha, ha, ooh.
my best. God. My my shame. I'm going to, um, we're going to see if we can actually get, uh, now the question is, for com it didn't crash, that is good, but the question is, can I actually get, no, it's not Lego Island 2, why did I try to get that to run? Let's That's get it to run. Oh, yeah, also, it needs a Lego Island CD. Um, that logo is actually a CD with a pizza on it that spins as it loads. Unfortunately, I have an SSD, so that doesn't work. <laughs> Um, I was looking for, where is it? Mega Media. Do I need the CD in? We're gonna find out. Yeah. Yeah, all right, cool. Well, I could try to show some more of these, but honestly, I don't really have the ability to right now also. Oh, hey, I forgot that does that sometimes. <laughs> Goodbye, Lego Racers 2. You served this well. But, yeah, no, Lego games are fantastic, and I highly recommend checking them out. There are some very interesting ones here. And honestly, like, look, as much as the, the Lego games become very formulaic after Lego Star Wars, and because of Lego Star Wars, I still love this game. I still love the comfort of knowing, hey, I know exactly what to get out of a Lego game. I know exactly what I'm getting. And that is, is a definitely a value there. I wish we had more interesting ideas, but there's definitely stuff to be said. Um, yeah, I unfortunately don't have anything else to talk about, really. And um, thank you all for coming. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. 
This is the first panel I've ever done, so it, it thanks. It, I'm very thankful for having you all here. So, yeah. thank you for coming. Have a good MagFest.